Hey Grown Zone Kids, it's Pastor Jason. Do you like surprises? I really like surprises. You know what kind of surprises are my favorite? My favorite surprises is when you know there's a surprise coming, but you don't know exactly what it is. And you wait for it, and you wait for it, and you wait for it, and finally it comes, and that surprise is way more awesome than you originally thought it was. That's my favorite kind of surprise. You know who's really good at making those kind of surprises? God. God's really good at that. He's really good at promising that something is coming. And then when it finally comes, it's more amazing than you could ever imagine. One of those surprises is Christmas. Now, way back in Genesis, that's the first book of the Bible, God promised a guy named Judah. If that sounds familiar, it's because Judah was one of the 12 sons of Israel. And those 12 sons turned into 12 tribes, and those 12 tribes eventually made up the nation of Israel. So way back when Judah was still alive, God made him a promise. And God made him a promise that one day a king was going to come from him. It was going to come from one of his great, 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 well, I could go on for a long time, but eventually a king is going to come from the line of Judah. Now, over time, God revealed to his people, he told his people that this king would be special. He would be a loving king, he would be a gracious king, he would be a good king, and he would be king over the nation of Israel. But you know how long they had to wait for this promise to arrive? It was thousands of years. That's a long time to wait. You know, if I had to wait thousands of years for a promise to come, especially if it was from God, I would kind of think maybe God forgot about me. Would you think that? Now, God never let his people forget about this promise. Sometimes it looked like they were going to forget, but then God would send them prophets. These prophets, they spoke for God, and their job was to remind the people how to live for God and to obey his commands, and also to remind them that one day this king was going to come and they should be on the lookout for him. They should be ready for when the king comes. And eventually, as God always does, he kept this promise. But also like God does, he didn't do it in the way that everyone thought was going to happen. Now, when this great king was born, you would think that this great king would be born with in a, in a, in a palace with a, with a band and, and such a great celebration of people knowing that this king was born. You would think that such a great king would have such a great birth. But that's not exactly how God planned it. I think you know the story. That's the story of Christmas, right? Jesus is that king. Jesus is the promised king that was going to come from the line of Judah. And he wasn't born in a palace. He wasn't born with a crowd of people cheering. He was born in a manger. A manger is like a feeding trough. Animals eat from a manger. And that's what they had to lay baby Jesus in when he was born. You remember Mary and Joseph were running through the town looking for a place to stay. Now one nice guy said he had, a, he had like a barn for them to stay in. That was really nice of him, but that's all he had. So this king, the special king who would rule over the people of Israel, he'd be a good king, a gracious king, an awesome king, was born in a barn. And he was born in a manger, a feeding trough for animals. God loves to surprise us, doesn't he? So why did God surprise us like that? Well, he really wanted to show us that this is not going to be like any other king. Jesus was going to be different. Jesus wasn't going to be a king just for a short time or over just a small amount of people or have a small kingdom somewhere on the earth. No, this Jesus was going to be a different king who ruled over everybody and everything. And he was going to be, again, a loving king, a gracious king and a good king. And Jesus wasn't going to be a usual king that lives in a palace surrounded by gold and jewels. And because he wasn't a usual king, he wasn't born in the way that kings usually are. And that's really good news. Because normal kings, especially from the Bible, they like to take from people. They like to take their land and their stuff. But Jesus, a better king, the best king, was not going to take from his people. He came to give. See, he's the only king that doesn't need anything because Jesus is God. He already has everything. So he doesn't need anything from his people, but he has everything to give us. And again, because he loves us, he did give us everything. Jesus gave you his life. See, he was born and he grew up and he never did anything wrong. He followed all of God's commands perfectly. And then he died on the cross for you. He died on the cross to give you eternal life. See, everybody sins. 
everybody has said no to God or, or has refused to do the things that God has told us to do. And that sin separates us from God. That's the punishment for our sin. But Jesus, by dying on the cross for your sin, he took it from you. He took that punishment and gave you eternal life and gave you forgiveness. That's the greatest gift anyone can give. Even at Christmas time, that's the greatest gift that is possible to give. And Jesus gave it to you and me. And we get this gift by believing in him. So I hope you believe in Jesus because if you do, he promises that you will be with him forever and ever one day. And that's a promise. Remember, we can trust God's promises. And I have a pretty good feeling that God has some amazing, wonderful surprises waiting for us when we get to be with him in heaven one day. So when you're celebrating Christmas this year, the birth of the King who was promised a long, long time ago, when you're celebrating him, remember, God always keeps his promises and his promises are always way better, way more amazing than we could ever imagine. And that's good news.